In the year 1926, a man named Antonio Cavalieri Ducati creates one of the most successful companies in the world, Ducati. When this company was formed in the city of Bologna, Italy, it wasn't meant to build motorcycles. They were actually building parts for radios. And this is at a time where everybody is trying to buy a radio around the world. A lot of people know this, but Marconi is the one that invented the radio. But a lot of people say it was actually Nikola Tesla. But this video is not about that. What we're trying to say is that you cannot underestimate the Italian industry at this time. And you could have compared them to the British, German and even American industries. But when you get to World War II, especially after the war where Italy is basically defeated, their industry falls behind the other European counterparts and they never reach back. But they still had a respectable industry and Ducati was one of those companies. And we kind of want to give you a short history of Ducati, but mainly focus on a modern motorcycle that was built a couple years ago. When you get to 1948, Ducati gets nationalized in the country and they release the first motorcycle, which you're seeing on the screen, called the Ducati 60. This wasn't comparable to other manufacturers that were building proper motorcycles like Triumph. But these Ducatis got so popular so quickly that they were actually competing with the big brands. And they sold 200,000 of these things in the first year. This little motorized bicycle basically puts Ducati on the map not only in Italy, but the world. And around this time, you could say that Ducati is competing with major companies like Triumph, especially in the European market. You have to know that during this time, Japanese motorcycles are not that hot and they're not famous. If you'd like to know more about it, watch our video about the history of Honda because that explains it perfectly on how Asian motorcycles hit the world market. When you get to the 1970s, Ducati starts to revolutionize motorcycles around the world and their beautiful designs are so iconic that they're known as the Ferrari of Ducatis. One of the main reasons that they're known like that is because they enter racing and their design was like no other. So it stood out compared to every other bike in that race. Of course, the performance was up there too, don't get me wrong. So it's no joke that they still call Ducati the Ferrari of motorcycles. Bikes like the Ducati 750 Supersport literally put Ducati on top of the leaderboard. You can't really say all the models that Ducati built over the years because there's hundreds of them. And this is just a list of the main ones. There are plenty more that are not mentioned in this list. But we're here in the factory of Ducati and we want to show you one of the most impressive motorcycles they have made. This machine, the Super Leggera V4. Super Leggera is a word used by plenty of companies like Aston Martin and Ducati, but it basically means super light in Italian. Before we see the production of this machine, you have to know that they only made 500 of them. In the beginning, we start off with the engine, a 998cc V4. This four-cylinder we're talking about is like no other, it's a V4. And you don't really see that because you're used to an inline four. There are plenty of V6s and V8s, but not a lot of V4s. This tiny engine produces 234 horsepower. And that means this is one of the most powerful, naturally aspirated four-cylinders in the world. It's not the most powerful, but it's up there. And if you don't know what naturally aspirated means, it doesn't have a turbo or a supercharger. Usually motorcycles don't do stuff like this, but just like the engines of the GTR and AMG, the person that puts the engine together does get a plaque with their name on it. In this section, we're building the two front forks that are extremely high quality made by the Swedish company Olins. And the rear shocks, which are not shown right now, are made from Olins as well.
This piece you're seeing, which is giant and very lightweight, is called the rear subframe. And if it was made from aluminum like every other bike, it would have been much heavier. And that's the reason they call it the Super Legera. One of the most important parts of a super bike is its brakes. So that is why on this bike you can see the best brake setup you've ever seen made by the company Brembo. Brembo is the best brake manufacturer in the world and a lot of hyper cars get their brakes from this company. And this technician is basically assembling the brake setup and bleeding it so it's ready to go on the bike. The engine is ready to go and the headers and exhaust go up. When the engine setup is ready to go, the rear subframe goes up and the chain gets connected to the sprocket. The disc brakes, the calipers, and the cylinders go up. On the handlebar, you could see the stamp of which number Legera you got. This one is the first one out of 500. The wiring and the bits and pieces go up and the carbon fiber wheels go up as well. When all the hard wiring and piping and ugly things go up, now it's time to put on the beauty cover. You could also see the VIN number, which is number one. A lot of zeros with a number one at the end of it. Their exhaust is made from Akrapovich, one of the best exhaust brands in the world. You might say, what about Ducati? Why don't they make any other parts? It's all from different manufacturers. That's because different factories, like for example, Mercedes, get most of their parts from different companies, and that's how you make a profit. If you make everything yourself, the quality is not gonna be top tier, and it's gonna cost a lot more. So that is the reason you see different parts manufacturer built for all types of cars. All right, let's get back to the beauty covers. Let's get to know this motorcycle a little bit better now. Just like we said, it produces 234 horsepower, but it only weighs 152 kilos. That's extremely impressive. 152 kilos, 234 horsepower, one and a half horsepower per kilo. And this is in a way where the BMW M3, which is a very high performance car, weighs 1800 kilograms. And that's one horsepower per five kilogram. Either way, this bike with the parts it has and the limited numbers has turned into an icon already, even though it's not even two years old. Only 500 of these were made, 
and they were handed to the customer and each of them cost $100,000. So if you want to buy a secondhand one, how much is it? You really can't find one except one in the United States right now. One that has 1,500 miles on it and it costs 103,000. And the reason it's not too expensive compared to the other ones is because there's a lot of miles on it. And for a collector item like this, that's an insane number because people don't buy this to ride around usually. Collectors want a zero mile one to leave in their showroom and maybe sell it for a lot more later on. Any of these that gets destroyed or high mileage, the other ones become more desirable. There are some businessmen that have a lot of money and this is what they do when they see a limited production run on anything. They immediately buy it because maybe in 20 years they become so desirable that they 10 times their money. Let us know what you think.